All right, Shalom, Shalom, Shalom. Back for another quick hit. And first and foremost, as always, before I get started, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory unto Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakakwadash, and double honors to the head apostles slash elder bishops of Great Millstone who teach and who rule well and who taught me this truth. All right, peace, blessings, and safety to all you sincere Akim. Keep pushing, keep believing, and keep the faith, regardless of whether people are here. Or what do they forbear? All right, and this lesson is going to be entitled that the prophecies were sealed into the time of the end. All right, something to that effect, because um, we're in that we're in that time now where these prophecies have been opened up, they've been unlocked, the Israelites have been pretty much awakened. All right, and the elect is rising up. All right, and um, the reason why I want to make this video is because a lot of people they're in the mind of well, all these different things have happened on the earth before. Okay, but one thing is different this time. All right, what's different in our time that wasn't before is that the Israelites had not been awakened, has not been awoke yet. All right, the technology uh, for the MOTB and for different prophecies to come out and come to pass was not uh, ready at that time. All right, it was prophesied of three world wars. Okay, we've had two, and now we know we're on the brink of the third one. All right, so. <clears throat> So like yeah, these these different uh, prophecies are, are are jumping off the pages now. All right, and also I want to make this video because um, you have people that are in these churches and they don't really quite understand that that they're even if they're doing it in ignorance that these churches and worshiping you know white Jesus is idolatry. All right, because the prophecies, like I said, they've been unlocked and they pretty much go completely against. Any uh, Christian or Catholic uh, doctrine, all right? The prophecies don't line up with the way that we were taught the Bible by Esau. Okay, so, you know, uh, people people that are listening to this video who may be new and, and uh, just now learning about the Hebrew Israelites, all right, understand that according to the Bible, everything that you were taught before, okay, before these prophecies have been unlocked is is pretty much false, all right? You know, and that's another thing too. Okay, uh, some some things may be true, but you know, like the yep, you do have some Christian churches that acknowledge that the uh, the mark of the beast is the chip, but for the most part, you know, they they, they go off on on pretty much everything else. All right, and and ninety percent of the Bible they go off on, and if you don't have the hundred percent truth, is it really truth at all? If, you know, you you have uh, if you got ninety eight percent truth, that's not really truth. You got ninety nine percent truth, that's not really truth. Okay, a hundred percent. All right, the hundred percent truth according to the Bible and Great Millstone. Okay, the head apostles slash elder bishops. Okay, the men on down are really the only ones bringing out the hundred percent truth. All right, not shying away from the harsher topics of the Bible. All right, not shying away from from the bitter. All right, because the Bible is not all rainbows and sunshine. All right, it's a book of woes and lamentations, as it says in uh, Ezekiel the second chapter down at the bottom. But once again, you know, you must understand that everything that you must understand that everything that you learned, okay, before the unlocking of these prophecies is pretty much false. All right. The 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 um the hundred forty four thousand, the prophets of the Lord, are gonna come and sing a new song. All right. So you can't be in that mind of, oh, well, you know, trying to like, oh, this is not what what I what I learned, this is not what I was taught. All right, all that you pretty much gotta trash, you gotta throw away. That's why the Lord said, repent and be converted. All right, you gotta be completely converted away from Babylonian Christianity. All right, which is an offshoot of Catholicism and all these different world religions are right, and come into the true knowledge, the 100 percent truth, according to the Bible. All right. That is reserved for the elect of the nation of Israel. OK, which consists of you so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native American Indians. All right. And then you confusion the faces, those who may look like other nations, but your seed line goes back to Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. All right. And you'll know that through the spirit. OK, we've done many videos on that. Um, but anyways, let's jump right into it. All right. Revelation chapter five and verse one. And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne, a book written within and on the backside sealed with seven seals. OK, and that number seven is the number of completion. So this book was sealed with a complete number of seals. It could not be opened. <clears throat> verse two. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof. And no man in heaven, nor in earth, neither under the earth, 
was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. All right. So, you know, um, even though, of course, we always had the physical, you know, the physical Bible. OK, we've always had a copy of it, you know, and the, and, uh, the, the text once again, you know, the, the under what this is really speaking of is the understanding. OK, the Bible has been there OK, for a long time, thousands of years. All right. The texts have been there thousands of years going all the way back to Moses. But even the prophets back then didn't understand what they were what they were prophesying of. All right. The Lord has told them, you know, what, what to write down or they had a vision and tried to interpret it and, and, and write it down as best as they could. But, you know, now in today's time, we see that we see we have an understanding. We understand what these prophecies mean, what these these hard um, parables mean. OK, these metaphors. All right. We understand that Babylon is America. All right. We understand the Israelites are the so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native American Indians. We understand that Esau Edom is the so-called white man. All right. The man of sin that has been revealed. All right. We understand these things. OK. Before this was not this was not understood. OK. Uh, we understand that that the Lord is going to destroy this place by nuclear missiles. We understand that the elect is going to be delivered by the chariots, all right, so-called UFOs. See, these things weren't understood 100 years ago, all right, because it wasn't time yet. And we're going to get that a little bit later on. All right, Revelation 5 and uh, and 4 now. Actually, I'll read verse 3 again. It says, And no man in heaven nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. And I wept much because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. Okay, so that's speaking of Yahweh, who the world eagerly calls Jesus. And that's another prophecy that we that we get the true name of the Lord back, the true name of the Heavenly Father, His only begotten Son. All right, because for such a long time, the truth was hidden. And as a matter of fact, just as a supplement, let's go ahead and get that right quick. All right. The truth had been so long without fruit. OK, but, you know, it's all part of the game plan. OK, how the Heavenly Father is in control of it all. OK, this is a uh, second Ezra chapter six and verse 27 it says for evil shall be put out and deceit shall be quenched as for faith. It shall flourish. OK, faith is flourishing among the, the elect. All right. And we're the hopeful elect. It says corruption shall be overcome and the truth which have been so long without fruit shall be declared. All right. And why? Because that way of truth was hidden. But now it's being declared from the rooftops. All right. You see the men out there on the highways and byways. All right. You know, keeping not silence, man, day in, day out. All right. You know, preaching the word instant in season, out of season. Approving, rebuking, and exhorting with all long suffering and doctrine. We out there doing, you know, doing the Lord's work, the ministry of the prophets. All right, because that's that. That's whenever that happens, that means the Lord is about to do some big things in the earth. All right, let's keep rolling. Though it says, um, so it says, you know, Yahweh he he was worthy to open that open that seal. Okay, so I'm gonna read that again. Revelation five and five, and one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. All right, so now that, that book has been opened, that understanding, all right? But once again, just to reiterate my point, you know, the understanding was sealed until the time of the end, which we're at now. Okay, this is uh, Daniel chapter 12. All right, Daniel chapter 12 and verse, I'm going start at verse 2. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. All right, that dust is a confusion. Okay. Some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. All right. So, so uh, the people, the, pretty much the Israelites is who it's speaking of. All right. You have you have the Israelites that know that they're Israelites and that's where their knowledge stops. All right. Because they're two thirds. All right, but they don't really have the mysteries, the breakdowns. All right. They can't receive it. OK. They, so they've awoken to who they are, but it's going to be they're going to wake to shame because they're going to be destroyed because the Lord is not going to deliver all Israel. On this side, all right, we know this according to the prophecies. And then you have the others, the one third, all right, the remnant, the elect, which is going to awake to everlasting life. And Lord's will we be at that number. All right, verse three, it says, and they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. And they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book 
even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro and knowledge shall be increased. See, that's, that's the time we're in now. All right. That's how we know we're at the end. OK, because once again, people always say, oh, my grandpa, my grandma been saying that for 100 years. Well, you know, they're saying that back in the 1800s, the world was going to end. But once again, all right, the prophecies hadn't been understood yet. All right, the Israelites hadn't woken up. All right. Knowledge has not been have not been increased, but now it is. And we're out there running to and fro. All right, bringing out this, these these prophecies every each and every day. All right. So he says, it says that seal the book even to the time of the end. I'm going to roll down. All right. And this is just to, t just to show you, you know what I'm saying? Just to show you that, um, just to show you that, um, you know, even the prophets didn't really understand what they was, what they was, uh, speaking about. Okay. This is Daniel 12 and eight. And I heard, but I understood not. Then said, I, oh my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? And he said, go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed to the time of the end. You see that? So, Whatever you was, whatever they was teaching 150 years ago, all right, they didn't have the understanding. Okay, and it's not you know, Esau led our people astray purposely, but you know, uh, these people that are still in these churches, in these uh, Christian churches, you know, learning about white Jesus, ain't really teaching them none. They don't understand the scriptures. All right, they have not came into the understanding because not you know, not all, not all, all, all Israel will will obtain it. All right. Not every, once again, the Lord is not going to really, uh, deliver every Israelite on this side. This is Romans 11 and 7. Let's see. Yep, here it is. What then? Israel has not obtained it. Okay, obtained that which he seeketh for, which is a truth. But the election has obtained it and the rest were blinded. So everyone can't receive these words. Okay, because, you know, the Lord is going to give it to who he wants to give it to. He reveals his secrets unto his servants, the prophets, as it says, as Amos 3 and 7. But um, anyways, Daniel chapter 12, okay, in verse 9, and he said, Go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed to the time of the end. All right, so we're at that time now. It says, Many shall be purified and made white. All right, they're going to be washed. They're going to be washed with the hearing of this word. Let's get that right quick. Okay. That's a true baptism. And I made a video on that, I believe. I, think I made a video on that a few weeks back. Okay. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 6, 26, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. That's not what I was, that's actually not the one I was looking for. Uh, what is that scripture? Salaki, bear with me. What is that scripture? Oh, here it is. Yep. John chapter 15 and verse three. I got to remember that. Okay. Yeah. See, so, so let's read that. Let's, let's run those back, run them together. All right. Okay. Daniel 12 and 10. I'll read all the way through. It says many shall be purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. All right. Now, how you made pure, how you made clean. Okay. It says, now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. So the elect are, is being purified, okay, through the hearing of this word, okay? And the elect and the wise are going to understand. Now, let's, let's keep rolling, okay? Scrolling down, back to Daniel chapter 12 and verse 13. But go thou thy way till the end be, for thou shalt rest, all right, and that means to perish, like to sleep. Okay, and to die, you're resting, taking a dirt nap. Okay, so he's telling Daniel, because Daniel, you know, was like, he's eager, like, I want to know what's, what's going on. He says, go thy way till the end be, for thou shalt rest and stand in thy lot at the end of the days. All right, and the spirit of a prophet is subject to a prophet. So if Daniel was a prophet back then, he's going to, he's here today. All right, in the end of days as a prophet. Okay, you know, one of the men that's out there in the highways and byways, he's not going to be a two third Long hair, weed smoking, you know, no ministry having, you know, Jake calling on Yah. He's going to be calling on Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, and he's going to be out there with a street ministry. All right. But um, anyways, let's see what's what I got next. Okay. 
Yeah, so these words have been sealed up, but now they are they are being un uh, unlocked. All right, Isaiah chapter 29. And let's see. I might be thinking of uh uh you know what? I'm not I wouldn't think about this one, but I can get this right here. This is beautiful. Okay. It says um Isaiah chapter 29 and verse, let's see. Chapter 29 and verse 18, it says, And in that day shall the deaf hear the words of the book, and the eyes of the blind shall see out of obscurity and out of darkness. All right, who is the deaf and the blind? That's the Israelites. Okay. They're the deaf and the blind. All right, but now, okay, it says that they're, that they're see. They can see out of obscurity and out of the darkness, and they hear the words of the book. All right, because the men of the Lord are out there on the highways and byways. The, the teachers are not hidden anymore. All right, so the truth is being declared. From the rooftops, all right, the truth is flourishing now, and so is the faith that comes from hearing this word, all right, uh, now going to Isaiah the 30th chapter, let's see, what is that scripture, Salaki, bear with me, oh, you know what, I think I was in the right, I think it was Isaiah 29, Salaki, yeah, here it is, yep, yep, this is what I was looking for, okay, Isaiah 29 and verse 10, all right. And it reads, for the Lord has poured out upon you the spirit of deep sleep and his eyes and hath closed your eyes. The prophets and your rulers, the seers, has he covered. All right. So he put that deep sleep on our people. OK, that was part of that's part of the punishment. You know what I'm saying? We go into captivity and discontinue from our heritage, pursuing to Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse four. All right. It says, and the vision of all is becoming to you as the words of a book that is sealed, which men deliver. To one that is learned, saying, Read this, I pray thee. And he saith, I cannot, for it is sealed. And the book is delivered to him that is not learned, saying, Read this, I pray thee. And he saith, I am not learned. Okay, so pretty much whether, whether you brought it to one of these quote unquote scholars or whether it was brought to, you know, a, um, you know, someone who didn't, who wasn't a scholar, no one had the understanding of the prophecies back then. All right, but once again, you know, now, or in that time where, you know, we had that understanding. All right. Let me see. That was Isaiah 29 and 12. Yep. Right, right, right. So we go to Isaiah 30 and verse, uh, let's see. Okay. Verse uh, 19. Okay. Isaiah 30 and 19. For the people, okay, for the people shall dwell in Zion at Jerusalem. For the people, for the people shall dwell in Zion at Jerusalem. Thou shall weep no more. He will be very gracious unto thee at the voice of thy cry. When he shall hear it, he will answer thee. And though the Lord give you the bread of affliction, a bread of adversity and the water of affliction, yet shall not thy teachers be removed into a corner any more, but thine eyes shall see thy teachers. And thine eyes shall hear the, a word behind thee saying, this is the way, walk ye in it when you turn to the right hand and when you turn to the left. So that's what we're doing now. All right, we're telling our people, hey, this is the way. Okay. According to what the prophecies say. Okay. Second Peter chapter one. All right. And once again, we just read that that the uh that the that the, the deaf and the blind would, would hear the words of the book and see out of darkness. Okay. This is um second Peter chapter one, okay, and verse uh verse nineteen it says we have also a more sure word of prophecy. All right, it's been unlocked now, we understand it. One and two. You do well that you take heed. You do well if you listen to these words of prophecy that's coming out of the, out of the mouths of the prophet, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place. Okay, so once again, they now they can see out of that darkness because that light has been brought forth until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. It says, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scriptures of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of the Lord, Yahweh, Shem Shai, spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Okay, so these prophecy was, it when it when it didn't start coming out because because the because the will of man. Because if that was the case, Esau would be out here. You know, what I'm saying Esau and these heathen nations would be trying to get in on this. But this has been reserved for the Israelites. Okay, as a matter of fact, let's get a precept on that. All right, this uh, these these words of prophecy are reserved for the prophets to give to the Israelites. All right, let me see this right quick. Uh, yeah, here it is. 
1 Corinthians 2 and 7, but we speak the wisdom of Yahweh, who the ignorant we call God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom, which Yahweh ordained before the world unto our glory. So this, this see these prophecies, the world don't really get it. They don't understand why it's so precious to us. But those that are of the hopeful elect, all right, you, 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 you very well understand why these words are so precious. All right. And the Lord and it's going to it's going to become apparent who the Lord's chosen are in the time of Jacob's trouble. So all these things will prepare for the glory of the elect. All right. And that's a beautiful thing. That's a beautiful thing. I'm going I'm to get ready to close out soon. Let's get a few more precepts. Second Ezra chapter eight. <clears throat> all right. Second Ezra chapter eight and verse. Uh, let's see. Verse 62. It says. Uh, these things have I not have I not showed unto all men, but unto thee and a few like thee. Then answered I and said, Behold, O Lord, now hast thou showed me the multitude of, of the wonders which thou wilt begin to do in the last times. But at what time thou hast not showed me? OK, so pretty much, um, you know, the, the first precept I brought out, second Ezra 8 and 62, saying the Lord has not given it to everyone. He said he's given it to to uh to men like Ezra, okay. Ezra, uh, Ezra represents the elect, okay. He's given he's given the words to the elect, and that's it, okay. I've given the words to you and a few men like you, all right. And now Ezra is like you know the wadi yahow bashmi al shai, because you show me all the great wonders and you know we and we you know we truly believe these these prophecies. He's he's put the the spirit on us to believe. He's given us that gift of faith to believe that, that he's gonna take Esau down in a miraculous way. That he's gonna deliver us from the from the nuclear fire, okay? That the chariot's gonna be down here burning people up. You see, he's giving us that faith to believe that. You see, and that's a beautiful thing. All right, so I'm gonna close out with this. All right, Matthew chapter thirteen. Matthew chapter thirteen and verse uh, sixteen right here. All right, and it reads, "But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear." For verily, truly, I say unto you that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which you see and have not seen them and to hear those things which you hear and have not heard them. All right. So don't take it for granted. This truth is the most beautiful thing we could ever have. So the water, Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh, Shai, Barak, the Yahweh, Barak, the Yahweh, Shai. All right. All praise and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh, Shai, Bahashem, Rakak, Wadash. All right. For this your Paul lesson and Lord's will, it was uplifting, edifying. And uh, gave some some understanding. All right. With that being said, shalom.